When was the last time you asked yourself, what have I done with my life? What am I doing with my life? How in fact have I produced something creatively to add to the growth and ascendance of humankind? Since losing um, some element of my vision as a consequence of being exposed to Agent Orange uh, and suffering through the years with glaucoma, uh, coming to a point where I'm not as functional as I was visually, I've been asking myself lately, not just what am I doing? Uh, how can I spend my day creating, um, adding to the substance of my conscious life? But it has occurred to me that other people in general don't make any attempt at all to add some element to their lives that would be contributory. Spending time on a phone or a computer, or just playing games, or thinking about who you can call next, uh, all that is just a way to avoid being human, a way to avoid uh, and escape from the feeling of necessarily contributing. And as a consequence of that, you don't feel um, special. You don't feel unique, even though the potential the human character for uniqueness and uh, potentiality is there with everybody, but the motivation to fill time with accomplishment is not there. Thus, people generally tend to escape and avoid confronting um, the idea or the need, the fact that they're not contributing. And I'm not talking about functioning in your job. Um, certainly, to feel better about yourself, you need some kind of substantial work to feel like you're contributing something to society. At the same time, um, your uniqueness as a human being is not being fulfilled if you spend your time filling your time with essentially nothing. And even, even as I recognize this, um, I wish that I could convey the need to accomplish to other people, because then uh, we would be advancing. And right now we're not. Finding little gimmicks, little ways to uh, speed up communications via an electromagnetic um, utilization and trying to make a lot of money doing this again is um, well it's it's a significant cop out you can become a multi-billionaire but it doesn't mean you actually contributed anything um, if you produce something expedient or somewhat relevant for other people's lives, I'm not saying you're not doing anything, but you're not doing anything unique. You're not contributing to the growth of knowledge, the production of uh, creative desire, 
uh, producing some essential uh, characterization for your life. And too many people, most people, as a matter of fact, utilize an evasive technique. Well, they'll, they'll say, um, I need to talk to so-and-so, or I need to uh, look up, you know, this piece of information in order to apply it um, for some expedient sake. All uh, escapement. When you escape yourself and neglect to look for yourself, to find out who you are, to find out what, what your potential is, what you're capable of, to avoid that is to nullify your life. That's my opinion. That's how I look at the world. In other words, let's say, for example, you're a writer and you get writer's block. So you go through periods where you can't produce anything. The reason essentially is because you don't regulate your time. You don't utilize your time. So if you write something and then you don't work the next day, you you lose it and when you lose it you lose your inspiration when you lose your inspiration uh, you go blank this never happened to me because on a regular basis every day if i decide that i'm writing a book or an article i'll write 10 pages a day every day i won't miss a day and the way you start writing is you decide on a subject an idea, concept. Once you write your first sentence that feels important to you, just one sentence, everything flows from there. But you have to let it. You can't avoid it. You can't judge it. You can't judge yourself while you're trying to create, while you're actually creating. You can't judge yourself. You can't worry before the fact whether other people are going to appreciate what you're about to do it's ridiculous and most people are like that they don't do something because they're afraid they're going to be, get rejected so they don't do it at all well they avoid rejection because they never produced anything if you never produce anything you can't get rejected but it doesn't mean you accept yourself either because when you avoid doing something to avoid rejection, you're rejecting yourself. That's what you're in, in essence doing. Or if you're an artist, well, if you want to be an artist and you don't know how to paint yet, you start by painting. You just put color on a canvas and you see where it goes. You see what figures arise from nothingness, from the depths <clears throat> of your mind and spirit. And if you do it every day, you grow. Whether you're an artist or a musician, if you're a musician, you have to play. The experience of doing is actually being. When you escape from doing, then you give yourself up. And if you give up your identity, uh, I hate to say this, but you know, you're nothing but a human animal. You know, you eat, sleep, you know, you walk around, you talk, communicate with other uh, others of your kind, etc. You're not really accomplishing anything. And then you die. 
And that threat of non-being is frightening, as a matter of fact. That sense of enemy, the fear of being alone, totally alone, preparing for non-being, is the most uh, frightening aspect of being conscious. And that's also why people run away from themselves and fill their time, which is something you can't ever get back, with nonsense, with banality, with uh, mundane uh, concerns that don't permit you to manifest uh, not just your true potential, but any part of your potential any elemental uh, part of your potential. So my communication right now would be basically to let people know that they should not try to escape from themselves. You have to be yourself because that's the only way to engender self-respect. It's the only way to maintain your integrity when you're aware of your life. If you run away from your life, if you run away from your consciousness, if you run away from who you can be, the, the threat of non-being is even greater, much greater, because then you, you shall decide that you never were. And that's difficult to live with. I can't live with it. And I don't see why anybody should try to live with it. But that fear of non-being um, is relevant on a day-to-day -day basis. Because if you don't create, if you don't examine your deepest self, then you're living in a non-being state. And as Jean-Paul Sartre said, you know, you, you maintain the responsibility for who you are, what you are, what you do. In my mind, every unique individual, every human potential needs to establish some kind of basis for ident identification in order to at least in some part avoid non-being, non-essence, irrelevancy. Running away and wasting time, which is all we have is the worst mistake anybody can make for themselves. Not only themselves, but everybody else. But essentially, most importantly, it's a tragic waste of who you are. So the next time you think about doing something, don't think about what you're going to eat that day. Don't think about what you're going to wear that day. Don't think about who will... Uh, judge you that day or the following day. Don't think about what people are thinking about you. Don't think about, you know, all the small parts of life. Think big. Think seriously. Think of who you are. And more importantly, who you want to be. Because you can't be a great artist if you do one painting. You can't be a great writer if you're afraid to write. You can't be a great musician if you don't play. You can't be a great scientist if you don't think about how the universe works. It's not enough to set up an experiment and examine 
uh, the empirical properties of same and then publish and con and concern yourself with uh, you know some small aspect of what you did a real scientist is someone who tries to figure out how the universe works to ask yourself the questions the substantial questions What is the universe made of? What's inside an atom? Why don't we see or experience uh, other material essence that's imperceivable? We can't think about anything um, beyond the finite so we wonder about the edge of the universe, regardless of how big it is. We can always ask, we have to always ask, what's outside of it? What is a galaxy? Uh, how does it relate to what we see that's very small? What is the essential relationship between the microscopic, mesoscopic and macroscopic worlds? Why is it that the small world is the reciprocal of the macroscopic world? How is it possible that quantum mechanics is explicable? How is it possible that everything is connected to everything else. That when you um, experience something, anything, it's communicated throughout the entire universe. Everything that happens to anything, um, any event that occurs in locality, extends to reaches far beyond the imagination because there is something that connects all things that is imperceivable what is this uh, radiation coming from all parts of space where does it come from does it necessarily come from a big bang which is it uh, a beginning or does it come from a connection of the uh, normal material that is perceivable with that which is imperceivable what is dark energy what is dark matter How can we explain the gravitational effects of galactic interactions? What are sterile neutrinos? A neutrino is a very small particle. It can whiz right through the earth without touching anything. How is that possible? The uh, number of galaxies is about 100 billion. It's about 100 billion stars in a galaxy. That number is seen in other ways, in, in other conditions. Think about how many neurons are in the brain. About 100 billion. That number, 10 to the 11, keeps coming up. 10 to the 11, as a matter of fact, is the frequency of DNA, which controls all interactions of the cell, tells the cell what to do. Numbers uh, relay information. 
So you, say, you ask yourself, is there a God? It's not enough to just say, I believe in God. What is God? Where is he? Why do we believe in that? What do we believe in? Do we believe in God because we're afraid of non-being? Or do we believe in God because of the character of the universe? Because of the perfection that we perceive? The uh, reciprocal, exponentially, of the macroscopic world uh, is essentially the microscopic world. We have to ask ourselves, what are we? What is substance? What is matter? Why does it uniformly behave in a way that produces consciousness? What is consciousness? These are just some questions. There's a lot more that can keep you busy until you face that threat of non-being. But don't exclude the questions that give your life meaning, that drive you to try to understand who you are, what you are, where you're going, if anywhere. So you are what you do, you are what you think, and you are, you are, only when you are. So fill your life with something positive. Fill your life with thoughts of wonder and essence and substance instead of wondering what you're going to eat or how you're going to dress or what somebody is going to think of you. Be who you are. But you'll never find out who you are unless you try to be, unless you're motivated to produce that unique, uh, that, that, to express that unique potential that's yours and nobody else's. I have nothing else to say. Okay.